Hello, hello, Facebook. Welcome back. So today we're going to be having Avi joining us. And this is by popular demand. I know last time we had a show, everyone was so excited and they wanted Avi to be here and they wanted Avi's opinion on things. And today, um, Avi and I decided that we're going to go live and we're going to talk about a very, very important topic. Just give me one second while we get Avi on our live today. This is going to be a super important topic, so I'm really, really hoping you can join us, okay? I think Avi is sending me a request. Let's join Avi, add him on, and he's going to open up the night. Hi, Leia. Hi, Moshe. Thank you all for joining, and hopefully we will not have any glitches, and there he is. Oh, hi, very professional-looking studio. <laughs> I'm behind the bare wall today because I'm like, okay, I gotta be quiet. My family's there. It's not gonna be peace and quiet. I hear, I hear. I, I went up to the office as well, so uh, I'm glad we're able to have this this conversation. I think it's it's so important for everybody who's who's tuning in now. Um, so, so, last to cut you off. so you actually started this live and we weren't successful from doing it from your page. Just yeah. remember anybody else who's watching. So we had to restart the live from my page, but I know you made an introduction. So just say a few words. I know you wanted yeah. to just again, what it's about. For sure. Of course. Um, so last week, I think myself, uh, along with many, many, many others in the community, seen a video going around of a father getting on live talking about um, talking about his difficulty with not being able to see his children. Um, he, I'm assuming he went through a divorce and his wife has the children and he really wants to see them. Uh, now, I mentioned that this video is not going to be specifically about that case, but it will be about dealing with co-parenting with a toxic ex. Not saying that that ex was toxic, but in a situation where um, there's kids involved and there's a divorce and you want to be able to see the children and it's not possible for you and there's a whole mix up back and forth and it feels very overwhelming for both parties. What, ha what do we have to do in this case? For me, I when I was watching that video... So before we go about your opinion on yeah, that, let me just yeah. add... First of all, um, whether it's that case or not, I also have to say something. I yeah. actually get a lot of phone calls. Happens to be in the last week or so, a lot of messages and even phone calls. I spoke to a couple of men during the last few weeks specifically for this topic. And I was mind boggled with the fact that sometimes they reach out to people like myself or to people like you because they really don't know what other network or where else to go to for their personal like cry for help. Now, we're not here to take any individual cases and we don't have any magic wand to fix anybody's personal problems. But the reason Avi and I decided this will be extra important to talk about is because there seems to be a common denominator. And we're going to get through that common denominator as far as what is the difficulty here? Why is it so difficult to really be a part of your children's life? Um, so we're not really even talking about anybody's personal case, even though um, some people will think it has to do with them because it, you know sometimes we listen to things and we think, oh, is that my personal case? That's just an assumption. We're talking about a general situation. Uh, this The reason it's gonna sound like it has to do with you if you're watching is because it's actually more common than we think. So it may look yeah. like it's relating to relating sure. to us. It's really not. So what were you going to say? Yeah, and I think what you just said, it's so much more common than we think. A lot of times when when people will scroll down through social media and you'll see, I mean, we see the comments that sometimes people will say like, why are you talking about this? You know, this is such a private case. So this is such a specific, unique case. You know, the rest of the world doesn't go through this. Well, guess what? Mm -hmm. People who deal with people like this, for example, I'm, I'm, a, uh, I'm a therapist. Yochavit is a public speaker. So we see the masses. We work with the masses. By the way, I'm a public speaker, but I was also told a new, new um, I'm also something else right now. What do you know? I'm also an influencer right now. An so, influencer. I have, <laughs> so I got another I title. So this is just new, by the way, coming in. Interesting. So as, like you said, as an influencer, you know, so, so people do reach out to you. 
And this does happen, you know, many relationships, first of all, I should say all relationships need work. Every single relationship is work. Now, when a couple gets divorced and there's children in the mix, it gets very difficult to stay on the same page because you feel at this point, you feel free. You feel like you're out of this negative situation where you're like, I don't need to listen to you anymore. I don't have to check in with you. I am no longer your spouse. I can do whatever I want. I don't have to ask you anything. And a lot of the times people forget that there's children in the mix and they are the ones who are really suffering. Now, like I mentioned before, the video that was going around about a father wanting to to spend time with his children first of all we wanted to we want to really understand what is it being in a toxic relationship with an ex right somebody who constantly makes situations much harder than they need to be um who will nitpick at small little things who will badmouth you who will make you who will make your life miserable a living hell and when <clears throat> go ahead you want to say something I, I i do want to say something you're absolutely right but i want to say something um about that particular situation since you brought it up as hard as it seems and as difficult as life seems for people and as much as we have a cry for help i don't think please if you feel like you need help and you really are like in your last ends with I will still say what I said that time during that video. We're not here for that particular video, but since you brought it up, I want to add, please don't bring your personal dirty laundry out on social media because you have to understand as much as social media is a tool that we use, if it's not a positive thing that you want to share and it's negative, understand that it will impact your children's lives, your family's lives, your relatives' lives, it can definitely be a negative thing. <clears throat> so so when we talk about negativity, again, not a positive thing. You want to talk about a birthday, a good event, your beautiful love that you share, you want to share that wonderful. But when you're talking about something very, very negative and personal, do not, I mean, again, who am I to say it? But my opinion, please don't do it like that. It, it really broke my heart. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you some of my thoughts from a legality standpoint can that hurt a parent in court absolutely because this can be for defamation of character right mm -hmm. saying that my spouse when my ex went on live and was you know saying all these negative things about me he didn't um, though let's make that clear no, no, no. I'm, not. Not talking, I'm not talking about i'm not talking about this specific case i'm just saying in general right um, that can be seen in court as a negative thing and can be, that can play ne uh, against you in court. Now, in this specific situation, when a person is in pain, when a person feels that, that they've been cornered and they feel like their voice kind of fell on deaf ears and nobody is listening and they have nothing else to do, sometimes people will turn to social media and say like, hey, I need some support, I need some help. And sometimes people may not know a specific outlet to go to to get that help. What I will say is, if anything positive came from that video, it is spreading awareness. Because my just my piece of my two cents to that person who was who is going through this right now, I can I I can't even begin to imagine your pain, feeling mm -hmm. so powerless, feeling like you're not being heard and you it's almost like you're forced to go out there in public because think about it this way it's not comfortable to go out in public and talk about not being able to see your kids and airing out you know all the difficulties and pain that you went through so if the person went is doing this already that's their cry for help so what i wanted to say is like this if a person is going through this there is help out there a lot of the times people don't want to get legal help but a lot of the times that can very much help. Why? Because the person, a lot of the times, let's say, let's say a mother, right, would, would hold her kids to herself, right, and not allow the father to see it. A lot of the times it couldn't be from leverage, feeling like, you know, I'm going to hold on to it because I have pain that he caused me, and this is the only thing that I have over him. That's one way of looking at it the second way of looking at it is and i hear this a lot in my sessions is every time my children go to his house his mother or his sister or his relative 
talks badly about me and questions my life and questions my relationship with my now boyfriend or now my now husband or my relationship what I do in my private life and they kind of try to get information from the children instead of just spending time with the children so every single this? our yeah. love didn't work out and yet now my kids love my ex but more than they love me because he's mm -hmm. so nice to them every time he picks them up and I'm the one supporting them and the fear of they're gonna love him after everything I'm doing for them or mm -hmm. how about when the ex moves on and you haven't mm -hmm. moved on so yeah. it's almost like oh so he found his partner or she found a partner and she got married or he got married well that's yeah. not fair so all of a sudden we start to say you already have a partner i haven't moved on so you know what i'm gonna hold the kids against you because that's your weak spot so you're gonna feel a little bit of the pain of yeah. not having that in your life right i'm actually i'm gonna look i'm looking at the comments here and guys if you have any questions please feel free to to write the comments and i'm gonna read them we have a comment from leah it says both parents should be present physically and financially men need to support their kids and women need to let dads be around men can't run away from child support so a few things there a lot of the times parents feel, fathers will feel why should i have to pay child support if the child is not even in my life i don't get to i don't get to parent them i don't get to uh to spend enough time with them why should i give them the money i don't want to make the mom happy or i don't want to make the wife more comfortable so definitely I have so much to say about that okay yeah so definitely about child support it is the duty of the parent to pay the child support 100 percent. if they birthed the child well if they if they brought the child into this world it is their responsibility there was a quote by um i think elon musk i once posted that children don't owe anything to their parents it was the parents action of bringing them into this world it's their responsibility now to make sure they have everything they need to be a fully functional healthy um individual did you want to say how something about, so, yeah like how about those spouses i'm just like thinking that feel like i don't have to pay child support she makes more money than me i mean come on seriously whether she makes more money or you or not you have to understand you're really giving this money for your own children <clears throat> If you were in the same family and you live together and your children wanted ice cream or they wanted a toy or a present or yeah. they have to go to a certain school, would you really hold back and say, well, your mother makes more money. Let her buy you the ice cream when she goes out with you. Yeah. So that, that, that's a very good point. In a situation like that, where the woman is making more money and the father thinks like, why should I have to pay? It's really for yourself. And the, and the, the reason is when you invest in something, not only with money, and if you invest in, in anything, with time, with care, with money, right, you will eventually build a bond towards it, right? It's like, <clears throat> sorry, they say, what's the most powerful, what's the most powerful love in the world? The love between a mother and a child. Why is that? Because the mother unconditionally constantly gives to the child, right? And this is how the bond builds. So for the father to give the child support, even when the mother is making more money, it's really to establish that relationship. Go ahead, Yakala. How about those parents? And this is like, maybe you have, I don't have experience in this, by the way, maybe you can give me some clarity. How about those parents that will lie in court? So they work on cash and they will lie in court and say, I don't make any money. Yeah. Okay, just to come out of paying child support. Again, it goes back to our own, you know, the previous, whatever we just said. It's almost like yeah. those parents who are watching, if you are guilty of that and you feel like, you know what, now you have a legal way of coming out of it because you don't yeah. show that you're making money. The reason I say this is because two reasons. A, I know personal situations like that, okay? I have actual people that I've spoken to that are dealing with this for years. And B, to your comment, Avi, before, where you said if we want to get through to do it through the legal system i will say i disagree because the legal system sometimes will drag this case for years yeah. okay they will postpone and postpone and postpone and sometimes people it, it can take seven eight nine years <clears throat> for a case to really be resolved and that means nine years of these children's lives are going what into the legal system's hands that's yeah. a problem because what happens in court is we'll see you back in four months. Four months comes along, you go to court, 
and all of a sudden they have to postpone the case again or the lawyer extends wants an extension because he wants to defend his client his uh you know customer and then they're going to go for another six months and then another yeah. six months this is actually not always the way to solve a case sometimes you can't do it through the court system and not only that court system doesn't really care Right. Okay, they don't really care, in all honesty, well, about which parent is really in the child's life. Well, I, I don't know if I want to make such a general statement. Because you know what it, I think? It's disgusting if we're going <laughs> to sit there waiting for the court to really help us sometimes, because yeah. things that happen are really not always fair. And we could see this so, even with what's going on in the world, okay, <laughs> with criminals and with everything else. So if we're going to leave our life and our children's lives for the decisions of these courts, simply because my lawyer is better than his lawyer and I'm paying much more money than he is, well, you know what? Not everybody has that option. And then what? Right. I, I hear that a lot also about getting a lawyer and being able to pay for it and then really them kind of dragging you all along through the court and giving you a very hard time. It's <laughs> definitely very tough to deal with the court system. But of course, if a person, if they're able to find in the end of the day, we want to re understand what is what is this what is the purpose of all all of this? What is the goal? The goal is to give the best life possible to the child, right? A lot of the times, people hold on to the children or hold on to the money. Think about it this way: the mother, and this is just a generalization, no no specific here, but yes, lawyers are not honest. Okay, um, the mother will hold on to the children as the leverage. The father will hold on to the child support as leverage, right? Mm -hmm. If we're both able to bring it all in and say, you know what, I'll pay you the child support. You give me easy access to the children. Let's make this work for the child's sake. Of course, we need to also talk about boundaries, right? Boundaries are very, very important. We don't, it's not fair to make children messengers in the relationship. A lot of the times they don't want to talk to each other. The exes don't want to talk to each other. So they say, here, tell this to your mom. Or here, tell this, you know, it's just say, here, tell this message to your dad. And the children feel like they're going from one to another, from one to another, from one to another, really confused, you know, because children, their brain is fully developed at 25 years old. Did you ever hear this case where um, adult children talk about the divorce of their parents in a good way. Like they say, you know, my parents really did need to get divorced. Um, it's much better this way. And, you know, it's everyone is, it's more peaceful, right? Adults are able to understand that because their brain is fully developed. At 25 years old, that's really where, when your brain develops. But to a child who's four, seven, nine, where they're still developing, they're still growing, and their world really comes crashing. And what about so, the children feeling that it's because of them, maybe, that their parents got the board yes, because they don't even the understand this concept? A lot, and this is exactly what um, what I work on with kids in sessions, that this is not your fault. Children will think, maybe if I would have listened better, maybe if I would have woken up in the morning without a problem, maybe if I would have gotten better grades, this wouldn't have happened. And then they start to feel like it's their problem. Then they'll, their self-esteem drops and they constantly think negatively about themselves. And if that's the character that they build at a young age, this follows on through adulthood. And then the cycle repeats itself in their own personal marriage. That's why it is very important for kids to, to seek help, to be in therapy during that time, just to be able to be validated and said, hey, this is not your problem. A lot of the times parents don't have the skills to be able to verbalize that. And sometimes kids would think, you're just saying that just to come make me calm down, right? But the trained therapists are able to help children understand that adults have to sometimes sometimes they don't make it work. And or that's maybe important. not a trained therapist, maybe a good mother and a good father who will constantly remind their children both parents still love you. For sure. If there is if there's harmony with the two exes, and I just want to put it out there that there are many families who are divorced and they just, it didn't work between them and they they co-parent the children 
excellent. They can sometimes go on vacations together. They go on family dinners together, sometimes with their other children, with their new relationships that they have, and it works out very well. It can work out very well as long as everybody's on the same page. And in terms of setting boundaries, if there's something bothering you personally that you need to work out yourself, maybe it's time to go seek therapy for yourself to work out that pain that you've been bottling in for a very long time. Sometimes people don't have a trusted friend or even family members that can handle that their stuff. Like think about it this way. Imagine somebody, uh, you have, there's a son, this son gets divorced, okay? And he goes to his mother and talks about his pain. Now for her, it may be embarrassing that her son went through this. For her, it might hurt her that her son broke his family so instead of thinking with her mind she's going to think with her heart with her emotions and say you know yeah i knew from the start she was no good for you um she never treated you right and continue to add fuel to the flame right and that's why that can that can be so dangerous because the point here is just because your relationship ended there is no benefit to stay with people and surround yourself who are constantly going to speak negatively about your ex. Because when you're surrounded by that, you will infuse that into your children. Every time they're next to you, you're going to be talking about how not good the parent is. We're getting some comments here. It's saying, um, uh, that's why I moved to Long Island, too much drama, was with my ex, next block for me, manipulating poor kids. So Asya just commented that she moved. You know, sometimes you need to do things like that, moving from your surroundings, because a lot of the times places, smells, sounds can remind you and be a trigger for you of negativity. If you feel like it's best for you to kind of pick yourself up, pack your bags and go to a new location to have a fresh start, that may be something that, that works for you. And that's an excellent point. And people might tell you, why are you going to do this? Why are you going to change your life and, and make all these adjustments for him and all that? If this is something that works for you, that's what matters. You do not need anybody's permission to make any type of change in, in your life. Well, um, again, that goes yeah. back to our point. Moving because you want to be able to be in a peaceful environment so you don't constantly see your ex out the window and remind yourself of why he's your ex. I could see that. But let's go back, not to that particular comment, but in general. So let's yeah. say we decide to move. But what happens if somebody deliberately decides to move out of state so that the ex has absolutely yeah. no contact because now he's out of state. So he really yeah. can't see the kids. We have to be yeah. so, it's like such a real yes. thread. Yes. Like, yes, as much as we don't need permission, and we don't need permission, of course we need permission. But remember, Whatever decisions you're making right now, while the kids are still small, yeah. it may backfire on you later. Because yeah. the kids are kids right now. They're going mm -hmm. to grow up to become adults. And yeah. unfortunately, they may not like you when they're adults. As right. much of a good parent as we can be, and we try so hard to be the best parents for our children, they may come and say, well, what did you ever do to me? And decide to go and search for their other ha father or mother, and they can still turn around and still choose to now have a relationship with that other parent because now they're old enough to make that decision. So yeah. sometimes when we do certain things from our own frustration, we have to keep in mind it may definitely come to backfire. Yeah. You definitely brought a good point about moving out of state. And I did hear this in the past where a parent says, I want to move, I want to move to Arizona. Or because my parents are living in Arizona, I got just got divorced. I want to move to Arizona with the kids, right? And it's tough because then the spouse says, Wait, but I'm not <laughs> going to Arizona. I have a business here. How are you gonna how are you gonna do that? It's definitely very important to have a conversation, meaning to say, you know, are you going to uh, allow the kids to come to New York every so often, and then you have another problem where the kids have no stability. The number one thing that's so vital and important for children to have when parents go through divorce is stability. Stability, 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 stability. If they have karate practice, if they have piano lessons, if they have dance class, if they go to a specific school, if they if they play with specific friends, if they if they attend a specific synagogue or gym or whatever it is, 
for them to continue their routine as much as possible. Uh, that would show those fathers that don't want to be in their lives or those mothers <clears throat> that choose not to be. Yeah, again, it, the, there's nothing There's nothing we can force. The most important thing we need to be able to give the children, a lot of the times also is speaking, to, communicating with kids. Parents, a lot of the time, make a big mistake thinking that, oh, they're still young. They won't understand. When they grow older, they'll understand. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> I don't know what's going around. My throat is killing me. I feel like everybody is like dealing with something. Just the club. <laughs> Guys, I think we talk too much. Our voice is giving up. That too, but whoever's watching and my coffee is getting away, I'm so sorry, guys. Um, you have tea, smart. My water is done. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, what I wanted to say was um, about about children who are very young, and you may think that they don't understand. They do understand. You need to be able to speak to them. There are so many good children's books that you can read to them <clears throat> to try to explain a good, strong family dynamic. There are games that you can play. There are centers that you can go to. A therapist, a trained therapist, will be able to help with this. What are your thoughts, Yechabit? My thoughts are like this. I am not professional when it comes to this. I don't, you know, I don't do this for therapy or for a living. It's just really, truly my thoughts, nothing else but my thoughts. It really, truly breaks my heart, of course, when anybody um, goes through a divorce. So the first thing I will say, we're talking about those who are still married, of course, not right now, from what I'm saying, not divorced, <laughs> is when we get married and we choose to get married and we choose to have a relationship, of course, anything comes up Things are not in our control. And if you speak to people who go through a divorce, the number one thing they will all say, the common denominator is, I never thought I would get divorced. I never got married to get divorced. My plan was to have a big family, to have a loving husband or wife. So it's never something that we plan ahead of time. Of course, we don't do that. But, but I, I do want to mention, actually, you'll be surprised, because I was surprised, but sometimes people do say, you know, I always knew I would never live with this person fully. I always knew we would get divorced. There are people who say this. And then you question yourself, like, so why did you get into this relationship then? Everybody so my, point, my point is, those that are still married, let's, like, the divorce rate is really <clears throat> high. And the question that comes to mind is, why is the divorce rate so high? So if we stop for a second and just try to even and like do our best possible whatever we can do to even eliminate eliminate as much as possible getting a divorce so that we don't have these topics the reason i say that is not because i'm like well you can't judge of course i can't judge <clears throat> the reason i'm saying that is we're living in times where people are expecting a lot where people are more impatient than before where people have that option of if things don't work out, then divorce is my option. And then we have these conversations where the person that's going to struggle the most is going to be the children. Now, <laughs> if it already happened, and Avi, I'm sure there's definitely situations in which divorce is the only option. Abuse, there's, there's like real situations where divorce like is like we have no choice. But once that happens and we get to the divorce, these children that Avi said before did not choose to come into this world and they're here are going to be the ones to suffer the most. So if you're a father or a mother who's watching and you haven't spoken to your children in the last, I don't know how long, not because you don't have access, but because you've moved on, you have other children now, you have another partner in your life now, can you please take a step back and say, that's great, congratulations that you moved on, <clears throat> but there are human beings in this world right now that you have formed and created that are lacking you in their life, that are lacking that parental figure. A mother is one way and a father is another way. You need to hold your differences aside and you have to allow, we're talking about those parents that wanna be in the child's life, that parent to come into your child's life and put your own ego and your own reasoning if it's not a reason that the child is being hurt if that's really not the reason aside because these children are going to grow up they're going to be lacking they're going to be emotionally unstable 
and it's not you're not doing them a favor you're really not doing them a favor you are hurting your own children avi can you talk about what would be the instance in which the parent will have a real legitimate reason i don't know if there is a reason but a real reason not to include the parent in the child's life what would be a real reason for that after after divorce yes so it would be it would be if there's neglect involved for example if let's say um <laughs> if let's say you have two parents a mother and a father it's the father's time to take the kids and he takes the kids for you know for the for the weekend or he takes the kids for the night and he leaves the kids in his house with his mother or he leaves it with his you know somebody else and he goes away you know with his friends and there's no routine for the kids they don't go to school um they wake up whenever they want there's no follow-up there's no follow-through there's no communication that's not okay that's a problem there right whenever the, the parent or for example sometimes a parent is doing something uh, that's considered inappropriate for those children to be involved like for example taking the children to let's say his girlfriend's house right let's say the father is in a relationship with a girlfriend and he takes these children to his girlfriend's house without communicating to the mother and then leaves them with that girlfriend that's not okay no. without communicating so he's right not so, even there he just leaves the house he can he can he, he'll be there for a little bit he'll leave them you know there's no there's no sense of stability i'm just giving an example right that can be a problem without communicating because the mother thinks why are you leaving my children or our children in somebody else's care without my consent right so that's not okay definitely communication is very important we got a comment here by liana babeko she says usually these men are not mature enough yet themselves well again i i don't know if we should generalize like that and say that men are not mature but also a lot of the times and this is what i noticed with with working with men is a lot of times men are hurting they're in pain and then their pain is not really validated by the masses their pain is not really understood a lot of the times especially that that men have to be this this macho have this macho persona of being the all-knowing being so strong of being i see you're smiling Yechavir. what's that about i'm just like what is the definition of a mature man what is the definition of a mature man that's interesting what do you think I, that's why i'm laughing you know um i feel like we have come to times we have come to the years i mean welcome to 2022 but times have changed we have been brainwashed by social media by the you know we're gonna call it like the new um woke. We gotta, like, yeah we're so woke now right like things that we accept as normal are so different now <laughs> we're all equal now okay there's absolutely no like you're you're like the half head and i'm there's no like that anymore like everybody I mean, now that, is okay that topic that topic is going to cause a lot of controversy yeah, 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 yeah. but you know what i'm sorry i sometimes i just can't hold back what can i say um it's it's nobody's it's not to anybody personally it's just i'm just smiling away because i'm kind of like this is the frustration it's real frustrating for me to see where we can do this with both men and ladies i have a whole other topic about like right now i'm kind of like taking the man's side like what does it mean to be a mature man but wait till i start talking about what does it mean for men to decide it's okay to go and have you know relationships outside of their marriage i mean that's a whole other topic that i don't even want to get started tonight because i don't think we'll have enough time think, for this life. Wait, do you think that that means if a man does that that's not mature well first of all that's definitely not mature although that like for sure you think that's a maturity thing oh definitely because if he has to grow up and realize what is more important for him his own personal satisfaction or the the the, the oath that he took under the chupa when he made a promise to be there for his family during good or the bad to support to understand that you know what as much as we have our own temptations we also have a promise and we also have the um the responsibility to know what is the outcome of our actions and the outcome is it may lead to losing everything i have so it's very immature that they choose to be able to lose potentially everything they have 
for their own personal satisfactions. But it can go both ways, but that's another topic. Um, maturity in a man. Now, how do we define maturity in a man? It's a very, very self a personal thing. Like, how do we define maturity in a man? I might think a mature man is somebody who is able to be responsible, go to work on time, come back on time, to understand that, hey, you know what, there's no more milk in the fridge, and if I'm able to go buy it, you know, that might be my definition of a mature man. Somebody else's definition would be case, different. In that case, I don't think I'm mature because I need my wife to tell me, Abby, we need some milk. And then I go to the store I'm and I buy that milk. Really bad. I that. But I'm saying somebody else's mature definition may be, um, I don't know, he doesn't buy me gifts on my birthday. Like, I, I don't really know what the definition is, but my whole point <laughs> is, like, we really have to... And there was another comment that was almost like when we get married, we lose our freedom, right? And then it's like almost like, you know what? Let me ask you this. Then why are we getting married? But but even that comment, like I, I don't agree with that comment at all. But that's what I'm saying. If I want my freedom, complete honest with you, <laughs> if I want my freedom, I had probably uh, I probably should just stay single because the truth is as a single girl, I'll travel around the world. I will wake up when I want. I don't have to cook for anybody. I don't have to do anybody's laundry. Um, I don't have to worry about you not liking the way I look that I gained weight or whatever. Like, like I will literally live like a well, life on my own. This is like this is like off the record, but you wanna you wanna laugh for a second? I always thought growing up, I always thought getting married was the freedom because <laughs> because. <laughs> When I, I love, and everyone knows this about me, but if not, now you know, I loved animals growing up. And I always told my parents, please buy me a dog, buy me a dog. And they're like, when you get married, you'll buy a dog. When you get married, you'll get a dog. Guess what happened? When I got married, I told my wife, hey, I, I'm married, can we buy a dog? She's like, oh, no way, I'm petrified of dogs. I mean, now we have three dogs and a whole bunch of animals. But, you know, so it's all about perspective, you know, how we view it. In, in my in, in my way of thinking it, you know, a mature man, somebody who's able to make decisions for himself, not having to ask. You have a lot of cases where people who are, you know, in their 40s and still asking permission from their parent, you know, if they're allowed to go out with a uh, certain person. Or, you know, you have cases where um, a man who's divorced, 42 years old, wants to go out with his girl, but because his mom doesn't like this girl, uh, because she was married once before, because she has one, you know, a kid or something, um, his mom doesn't approve of it, so he's not going to pursue it. So uh, somebody who's not able to make their own decisions. Love that definition. I actually agree with you a thousand percent. Wow, that is definitely immature. Mm -hmm. If a man gets married and he has to ask constantly from his parents about what to do with every step of of his life, I I, I truly think that is a great definition. But if you were to stay here, I don't think it's mature. If a man has to ask his wife for her opinion, uh, then I would be a certain way because I don't think that's immature. I actually think that's a real, that's a man. If a man could still say, hey, to his wife, what do you think about this? I actually think yeah, that makes sure. him, that's like really attractive. For sure. I, I actually think that's being very mature because a person with a low ego, with a, a person who doesn't have, who has not ego, but a low, low <laughs> level of confidence, they need to, they feel like they need to overcompensate and always make the decision, but somebody who's able to give someone else the platform to be able to share their opinion, that's actually a very confident person. Um, we, got a, we got a comment by Leanna saying, the mother should, uh, should, full, should, I guess, should be full of positive energy around her kids. You know, this is another thing. Let's talk about positivity. It's, it, it would be great in a perfect world it would be great to always be positive. Unfortunately, let's be real, it's not possible. And all feelings are valid. Anger, sadness, frustration, disappointment, happiness, these are all valid feelings. And whenever we think about these feelings, it's not, the problem is not having these feelings. The problem is what we do with these feelings. So for example, if you're angry at your ex, right? Your negative response would be to withhold the children and not allow him to see the children, right? But if you're angry and communicate your anger to a therapist, communicate your anger to your ex, communicate your anger to a trusted friend or a family member and saying, 
I feel like I don't have control over A, B, C. What do I have control over? And try to figure out what you can take in your own hands. It's all about perspective and how we handle the situation. We have, we have what about, Tammy asked the question, what about if the children do not want to have a relationship? Oh, this is such a good, good point. Children, and you have this a lot with teens, with teenagers, where teenagers feel like they don't want to speak to one of the parents, right? Definitely do not force a relationship onto your children. All you will be doing is pushing them further away, respecting their boundaries, respecting their space, even though they are children, teenagers, is the most important thing you can do. Now, of course, if they're being disrespectful to you, right, cursing you out, calling you names, crossing the boundaries, that's not okay. But if they, if they don't want to have to, they don't want to check in with you, they don't want to cultivate a relationship, there may be reason for it. And possibly the best thing that you can do is to give them space with assurance that, hey, I love you, I am here for you, if you ever need to talk, just know my doors are always open for you. My heart is always open to be able to, to be here for you. Once you establish that channel of communication, the relationship doesn't feel forced and it doesn't feel fake. What are your thoughts about that? I'm just so sad for anybody having to go through that. Well, you know, I, I, I hear you, Yochavad, but, you know, life is very... Obviously, I'm just saying, even, even reading life, that comment alone is, is, is so sad that people have to even go through that. But, you know, life is very complex. And, you know, the, what I am very happy about, I should say, is that people, the, the new generation now, the time of social media, a lot more people are getting into mental health. Years ago, thinking about going to a therapist, it was so unheard of it was i'm not crazy why should i go to a therapist but now i want to just acknowledge that so many people are taking this seriously and paying attention to it you know even in schools and this is like a complete uh, another i want to do another live on this you know when when working on schools before parents thought the schools the school system is like the all-knowing you know don't question schools don't question authority you know but now i want to just also bring up Question. I'm sorry, Avi, my dog is acting up. I'm just going to pick him up. You keep talking. Sure. sure, no problem. I would love to see your dog. <laughs> I'm bringing him to the camera because he's, he's misbehaving right now. Oh, okay, my go God. He's, he's such a cutie. Sometimes, sometimes I wish I could pick up Sophie like that and bring her into the camera. <laughs> Sophie's my dog for anybody curious, right? So I wanted to just say, you know, parents are the number one advocates for the children. We have another one here. How can a person person have that kind of conversation and stay calm with a person who they have a hard time communicating with? That's an excellent question. Unfortunately, having an open conversation with some with, a, with an ex or with a partner who's just completely shut down, a lot of the times we need to find out or we may never find out why that person is so shut down, what's going on in their life, possibly their upbringing they didn't talk about feelings and emotions, and they learned that they need to shut down everything that they're feeling. So when they get validated for how they're feeling, a lot of the times when we talk to a spouse, part of communication is also listening and validating, not having to give your own opinion, and just hearing where the person is coming from. Validation can go very, very far. To, to answer your question, Mazal, it's tough, especially dealing with, let's say, a narcissistic person, a person who is the all-knowing, feels that they know the best, feeling think, think that their opinion is top and they don't want to hear anything you have to say because your answer is dumb. It's, it's very hard to live with a person like that. So my suggestion would be for the person in a relationship like that to go and seek help and go to therapy and learn the skills to be able to communicate with a difficult spouse because there are skills there. You cannot control them. You cannot control a narcissistic person. But what you can do is you can control what comes out of your mouth and how you handle the situation. Um, can I take the next question? And I'm not yes, answering sir. this as a therapist. I'm gonna really answer this as my thoughts. What are your thoughts on when an ex marries somebody not Jewish and you feel it will affect the kids in a negative way? Um, so again, come on. My thoughts on this. I would be very, very particular. So it's very important 
okay? Not that I have anything, it's not, it's not a personal thing that I have anything against people who are not Jewish. It has nothing to do with a being like we don't think that they're good people, nothing to do with that. It's about understanding that there are boundaries. So if the parent wants to take care of their children, that's great. But if you are the second parent and you feel a certain way about your children eating <clears throat> things that are, for example, not to your religious standards, and you know that that will affect the soul of your children because you have different beliefs. You're very, very particular about raising your children in a religious way. And you don't want your children to be exposed in areas or houses where, let's say, the kosher level or their, or their religion or whatever it is, is definitely going to make an impact on the children. Now we're talking about the children's souls. Now we're talking about the overall effect that will have on the children as a whole. So for me, I would definitely have a boundary and say, I, as much as it's so important to spend time with the children, you have to definitely talk it over. Like, where can the children eat? Um, what do you allow those children to be exposed to? If you're coming from a house where you feel, I mean, where you are Sabbath or like you're observant, you may not be able to have the children spend Shabbat in your ex's house because of that reason, because to you and your standards, that is very, very important. So part of the boundary will be, you can spend time with the children, let's say on a Sunday, on a Monday, <laughs> any day of the week, but when it comes to Shabbat, the children or holidays, they have to spend the time with me because I am very particular about our children's souls and overall religious well-being. Right, but what do you have in, I mean, I understand where you're coming from and that would be great with a spouse who is understanding right, of religion and orthodoxy. But if you have a case, let's say the wife is a religious person and has children. The husband is not religious, married somebody who's not Jewish, right? First of all, I'm, I'm not a rabbi and I don't want to- um, Portray one on TV. <laughs> no, I don't do that either, right? I don't want to speak for a rabbi in terms of, uh, you know, halakhic, what's, uh, what's allowed and what's not allowed. What I will say is as a therapist, safety is the most important, right? The safety of your child is the most important. So for example, if let's say you, you keep kosher in your home and your child goes to your ex's house and they will order McDonald's and you feel that's a conflict for you, possibly also this is a conversation you can start to have with your child but also definitely have this conversation with your ex explaining that let's look at the child's world, right? Is the child in a yeshiva? Is the child surrounded by religious Judaism, right? Religious people. Um, if they are, this is their world and them associating themselves and not, and not eating and going to McDonald's and doing all these different things, it may be, in, uh, it may be affecting them. Right. So just to be able to have that conversation, say, hey, let's set boundaries as to what's allowed and what's not allowed. Right. In the end of the day, if the if the parent says, I don't care, I'm not religious, you're religious. When he's by you, he can do whatever you know is important for you. And when he's by me, these are my boundaries. You can speak to a rabbi just to know, you know, what's considered appropriate and not appropriate. For example, if the TV is on. Are you going to fight with your with your ex for the TV to be off? You know, it's really about picking your battles. If you want to go according to halacha, speak to your, uh, what is it, local orthodox rabbi and try to figure out what's considered appropriate and not. You know, the religion, and I'm not speaking as a rabbi, but religion is not right. meant to make you miserable, right? It's not meant to make you, you know, stay away and locked in a room just so you don't hear the TV. No, but, and I don't think know, religious rabbis, people are miserable and they're not locked up in rooms. Rabbis rabbis will work, be able to create a, a plan for you that, okay, when your child goes to your ex's house, you know, these, uh, you know, maybe possibly he can, uh, the TV will be on, but maybe he just won't watch the TV. Different things like that. So there's, you're able to be, our son made a great point. He said, co-parenting will only work if both parents respect each other. That's the common denominator. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, <clears throat> besides communication, besides boundary, we have to still respect each other as human beings. 
yes, sometimes we have things in our mind and we feel like we have a grudge and, and we use certain things as payback and we pick on things that we wouldn't have picked on before. We all of a sudden become religious now when we weren't even religious before, but now we become religious just because we're finding reasons not to allow our children to see the second partner. We really um, lack respect. We lack yeah. what it means to be an individual with morals, with con with proper conduct, and um, we should not lose ourselves because it it's definitely unfortunate that divorce happened. It was not planned. It happened. Now, Avi, I'm not familiar with this topic, but maybe you are. What is a prenup? A prenup. That's that's an excellent question. <laughs> that would be a question for a lawyer, but I'll answer I'll answer it real quick. Um, a prenup, a prenuptial agreement is, and especially actually now, um, there's this new prenup that came up uh, because a lot of times in the religious custom, right, there is something called a get. A get is like a divorce paper, right? Setting the woman free. Um, and a lot of times men feel that they have the woman trapped and they're able to get divorced, do whatever they want, remarry, and not give the get to the woman. So she is in a binded relationship where she can no longer marry somebody else. There's this new thing that they, they, they started. You sign a prenup that if you divorce, she automatically gets her get. Also, in the American culture, a prenup is in terms of assets, right? What as Whose assets belongs to who? So what I will say is like this. If you're entering a relationship, and neither of you have assets, right? Do you want to sign a prenup? That's really up to you. But in a relationship where one of the spouses are doing really, really, really well, they have a lot of real estate, they have a lot of money, right? And then they get into the relationship. You know what, Yechaved? It's kind of, it's kind of tricky because who knows? Maybe they'll get into the relationship. A year later, they're divorced. And then they have uh, half of the assets and this person worked half of their life to make that money. That doesn't seem too fair. So that's why also uh, sometimes you'll see this like in, in relationships who are people who are a little bit older, sometimes in second marriages or third marriages, they'll start to talk about a prenup because they don't want to get stuck. So this is also a very individual matter. I do want to mention something. Mazal wrote another comment, Mazal Matav, she wrote, there are some fathers who do drugs while with the kids in their care or do other single life actions when they are there. That is very true. Wow. This is a big it's problem. A big, this is true. a very big problem in the community. People don't realize the importance that of, of, these, of these conversations, of these lives, that people, many people that you may know in your community, it might be your neighbor, it might be your brother, it might be somebody in your, in your synagogue, somebody in your job, some, one of your friends that do drugs or that they, they are an alcoholic. It doesn't matter, male or female. I'm starting to see this more often, even with females also doing drugs, also drinking alcohol. So definitely that's a big topic. And when we work in therapy with clients, if one of the people are associated with drugs or alcohol, we do not involve them in the family session. They have to be clean first before they can be involved in the session. Why is that? Because they cannot think straight. Even in a couple relationship, when I do couples counseling, and if one of the spouses is on drugs or is drinking alcohol, I will not see them together. I, I will have to see them individually. Either I will only see one of them. Well, <clears throat> happens to be I'm, I don't I don't work with addictions. So if any any client comes in for addictions, I will refer them out. But I do do family counseling, right? And if so, if one of them, if let's say the father, he's an alcoholic, I will say you need to get your own therapy to make sure you work out your own stuff before we can get started with the whole family dynamic. That's a very important fact. And I agree with Mazala that you said that when a child is given to care <clears throat> to a parent who does drugs, it's very confusing because the child you is- You mean like, why, I, I mean, I'm very confused. First of all, 
if a parent does drugs, that he's not only harm, harmful for himself, he's harmful for the children. He has altered yeah. mental status. 100%. He, he exactly. cannot function. He well, may be driving this, under the influence. Well, this became, well, again, because this is part of their life, this is their norm. They, alcohol. They put alcohol in their coffee in the morning. Uh, prescription pills. Even smoking marijuana, right? Smoking marijuana. That's something uh, that, that they do. That's a problem. That became, it's like, it now became like smoking a cigarette. You know, their inhibitions go down and they're not able to be fully focused as they're supposed to be. There's a safety so that, issue there. So what, what was that? It becomes a safety issue. Right. Um, Bella, Bella commented, men will show his maturity before marriage. That's what I think. If he's immature, he will be the same when he's married. Oh, wow, Bella, that's a great point. You know, you don't get married to change someone. This is the biggest thing that people think, oh, when I'll get into the relationship, I'll fix them. No such thing. You marry them for who they are. The only person that you're going to fix in this relationship is yourself. And that's the only power that you have. Um, Angela writes, uh, some dads, they, they don't want to be in kid's life after divorce. They don't want to see their kids even if they live next block. Kids want to have a communication with their father, but so some dads, they don't, they don't know anything um, year and years about about his kids, not even financial support. Um, to answer your question, uh, Angela, this is something that men, many men also do. It's very difficult for men to be able to express themselves. And for men, a lot of the times, it can be very embarrassing to go through a divorce and to lose their family. They feel like Everything that they built, every, all their hopes and dreams that they wanted to have came crashing. They sometimes feel responsible. It's not just for men. It actually happens a lot for ladies, too. Right. But I'm talking about the man side. A lot of the time, and this is a defense mechanism, avoidance, not to be able to, not to have anything to do with them. Some of the times it can, it can really be too much for the mental, mental capacity to handle it. Not everyone is strong enough. So a lot of the times we're so quick to judge as to why the person is doing something, but it could very much be that they don't have the skills to be in this type of relationship. You know, these things are not really- but They don't have the forth. skills to just continue being a father? Some, in a, in a, in a co-parenting relationship? No. Sometimes this needs to be taught. A lot of, because think about it this way. When you're in a relationship, right? You have one world, right? You have the children, the father, the mother. It's one world, one complete world. When you break up, you now create two worlds. One for the mother, one for the father. And then the middle is connected for the child. Hang on a second. Um, can you see this? Yeah. Do you see my world, the X, and here you have the kids. Do you notice that? Tiny little space for kids. Right. So you see how the kids' world is the combination of your both worlds. So that's why sometimes fathers don't have the skills to know how to co-parent. A lot of the times, parent uh, fathers might be angry. Or, sorry, might be in pain, might be suffering, having might have anxiety, but it looks like they're angry. It looks like they're narcissistic. It looks like they're not a person that you can talk to. A lot of the times, all um, they're trying to do true. is all they're trying to do is trying to stay above water. And also, guess what? Men also get embarrassed by the public, not just women. Men feel embarrassed when people look at them, when people judge them, when people question them. Oh, you got divorced? What's going on with you? Where are the kids? What's this? What's that? And it's a big problem. And you may think like, oh, you're a man, so you can handle it. That's not the case. Sometimes men go into their own shell. And yes, sometimes men, and this is a big, big topic, and it's a scary topic, and I don't want to trigger anybody, but sometimes men think, I don't want to wake up tomorrow. I can't handle this. This is too much for me. And this that's is why, why I want to add. That's why I want to add that as much as we're talking about fathers being embarrassed and everything else. Yes, you know, many times, many times, it's easier for the men to move on. It's much easier for a man to move on after a divorce 
than it is for a lady to move on after a divorce because men have it easier to get remarried. Um, they're mo most of the time they're coming by themselves. The kids are under the care of the mother. So as much as you're saying they're embarrassed and I totally get all that and they, it's valid, um, they definitely have it easier. Now, the second part is for the ladies, why are you smiling? It's true though. <laughs> I'm not gonna say if it's true or not. Men, I'll tell you this, I'll tell you this. Men learn to put on a very good poker face because they know that they don't wanna show their real emotions. But guess what? A lot of men are suffering in silence. No, for and sure, but I'm saying in general, if we look at the big picture, most of the time men move on quicker than ladies. Now, the reason I say this, when that happens that they move on and they're still suffering inside they really are suffering just because they moved on doesn't mean that their life is like they're starting this new life they're still remembering their children and they still want that part of their life they still want to have them in their life their ego might come in the way where they don't want to act a certain way not to you know uh, diminish their ego and their self-worth and not fight too much but those men that are wanting to be a part of those children's lives. We're gonna go back to the same concept. The mothers should allow that to happen. If there is no abuse and there's no threat or anything, let these children have the ability to spend time with their fathers. They should not hold it against their exes because it's just going to cause problems and damages for their children because the child needs a mother figure and a father figure. Both have an important role in the child's life. As much as the mother is there to nurture and love, believe it or not, I mean, I don't know, I'm just saying like I'm a girl and I think a lot of girls, and again, it's a stereotype, they're very close to their fathers. They love their mothers, but if they're close to their fathers, a lot of the boys will be much closer to their mothers. It's stereotypical, but usually gender-based, they gravitate towards the opposite. So for the daughters, that love from the father may be so important so that when she grows up and she has a husband and she gets married, that father figure is important for her in making that decision. It's important for her in realizing the good that there is in men, that not all men are horrible, that not all men are terrible and vice versa. It's gonna go both ways. So we have to be able to come to terms, which is what this whole life is about. We have to be able to come to terms that it's so hard. We're not in it, obviously. So as much as we're gonna talk about it, um, we don't deal with it personally. So that's number one. I feel like I really can't say what it feels like because I've, I've never been through it. So it would be very unfair for me to try to sit here and give advice as much as knowledge as we may so, have. So it's not about, it's not about giving advice. It's really about empathizing. And this is the biggest thing that a therapist does really tries to connect with a person and understand their experience and what they're going through. You know, as Irina, she commented, she said, um, very easy to say, but difficult to achieve. Unfortunately, 80% of divorced couples do not care what the other partner needs or feels. So first off, two things. Number one, it's not about the partner. It's about the children. We're talking about the children. That is the main focus. And in order for you to co-parent the children properly, respect also has mutual respect also needs to be part of the mix. It's like when you bake a cake, right? If you put eggs and oil and water and vanilla extract and all that, but forget the flour, you can't make the cake. So respect is one of those main ingredients that you need to have in order to be there for the children. So, and also think about it this way, what you put out there is a mirror. Now again, I want to be very specific though. I don't want to make a general statement because living with a narcissistic person, you cannot change that. Sometimes you will be the best version, so understanding, and you will be in a very crappy position. And for that, I say, you, number one, you get a lawyer. Number two, get into therapy and get the kids into therapy. So this way, at least you're able to set healthy boundaries and have the most control possible. <clears throat> Amazing. That's very well we're looking, said. We're looking um, with Arsene, Arsene Gurgov uh, commented, he said, one big advice to fathers 
do now uh, do not ever give up on your rights and always show up and spend time with your kids i want definitely even when mothers try to do anything to de uh, deprive you seeing your children if father believes that kids will come back after they get older without any investment of your time with them and because when they are young they will never feel the father and child connection when they get older if the father is absent beautifully said um arson you are a genius i love how you put this together he's right you know many times fathers say well that's arson when when they get older they say he says when when people say when they get old when the kids get older they'll know who's the good one they'll they'll come back to me and i will explain everything to them that's not how it works in order for your children to have a relationship with you when they're older you need to invest time when they're younger and you are right arson that you need to fight to be with your kids and because Never also this is another thing don't give up also with court and this is something your lawyer can tell you more don't give up your rights so easily because once it's given to the other parent that's it there's not much you can do so definitely make sure you show up and make sure make sure the things that you do can be documented and proven and said hey when i'm with my child we do abc development things that are developmentally appropriate you know if you're doing things that are not good for your nine-year-old and they won't be able to you can't go to a to, to a, a club with your nine-year-old child that's not okay right so you need to be able to do things that can be proven that is benefiting the child and this is something that can protect you in court so definitely also arson don't bad mouth your your like don't bad mouth the mother the father <clears throat> to your right. children like whatever right. you have with him is between you and him uh, right. let your children make their own decisions <clears throat> if the father yeah. is a loving father and sometimes there's a lot of regret sometimes men do regret the way they behaved or the way they acted and they do want to change but it's already it, it's too late right at that point yeah. so at least they want to show um the love for their children now as a way to cope and as a way to feel that they have at least um fixed that mistake that they did so sometimes you may feel a certain way but give that chance for your child to have to experience the love of a father because you'll be surprised how much this father can really offer the children right Ar arson also he also writes how mothers sometimes manipulate kids against the father to make sure that they retain control which is completely selfish you know we're not going to generalize and say mothers do this or fathers do this but anytime a parent manipulates their children they are damaging their 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 sense of self because you're you're basically taking the child and you're showing them that you're they don't have a place they don't have a safe place to be because guess what your relationship with the spouse was affected but they are the child and both of you the mother and the father you're their world for them so whenever they see that their world is crashing that affects them that affects their relationship with their friends that affects their relationship academically in school with their teachers their relationship it, it affects their relationship with, with themselves who if they feel worthy or not so definitely not being not manipulating the situation and being the, having very open communication and being real with yourself if you're if you're in pain if you're angry go go work it out with your therapist talk about it figure out why does this affect you so much possibly sometimes women or men feel embarrassed that their relationship crashed and they feel like they can't face their their friends they can't face their relatives because they feel embarrassed I got divorced and now everybody's looking at me. I look like a, how do you say nebuch in English? Nebuch? Or in Russian? How do you say it in Russian? Tell us in the comments. How do you say yeah, nebuch? Like it's a Yiddish word. It's a Yiddish word, yeah. Bechore, bechore. Look like a bechore. Bechore. So how do you say bechore in, uh, in English? Or so, I don't know. Or so, <laughs> right? So that's, um, the, the children should definitely always be the best interest. Um, to wrap up. I think we're going to start yeah. wrapping up. Yeah. But if you have any questions, like last few minutes, ask them right now because we're. This is such an interesting topic. It may need a part two. Um, yeah. So before we're able to log off, I really think that uh, we want to have Avi is like so brilliant. I'm enjoying. Oh I've actually learned 
so much today from you. I, I really, I'm like really enjoying this. You really know what you're saying. You have a lot of experience. Thanks, and, thanks um, for, um, for, for coming on this live with me. And I know we had, we had an interesting situation with my page and your page, but I'm glad, I'm glad it all worked out. Um, I do want to say, if you are in this situation, um, anybody watching, if you are in this situation where um, you got divorced and kids are in the mix and you're having a very hard time and you're not sure what to do, there is a way to get out of this in a healthier way. There is a plan. You're not the only one. There are many other people going through this too. Speak to the right people to get you the support you need. If you're in pain, start to get, learn to get in tune with what's going on internally for you. Um, it's not easy. I do want to just say it's not easy to go through this. Self-care is super important. Do things to fill up your vessel because if you're going to feel like you're on burnout, you have no more fuel to kind of get you going, that's not good. You have to definitely take care of yourself also and your mental health. You and also learn to move on. You know, I actually, when I speak to people who went through a divorce, um, they almost feel like just because they had a bad experience the first time around that this is what it is to be married. Well, you have to learn to move on. You have to learn to accept that, unfortunately, it was rough the first time around, but there are so many amazing people out there. Marriage can be beautiful. It can be loving. Just because the first time did not work out, don't but lose hope. Divorce can be beautiful, too. I do want to mention, if you are in a toxic relationship and you feel like you're exhausted, you feel like your, your character is constantly being crushed and you don't want to leave this relationship thinking you're protecting the children, thinking you're protecting the family name, you're not. You're only hurting the children. I know the, the process of divorce can be difficult. I know it can be scary but definitely get the help you need so somebody can walk you through it. I'm not saying that- I'm not gonna any... attach myself to that statement. No, I'm saying, I'm saying- <laughs> I don't wanna encourage is, divorce. I'm not saying that I'm encouraging divorce, but I do wanna make sure to say that a lot of times people feel trapped in the relationship thinking that they have to stay because what are people gonna say? If That's you're true. not happy and you did everything in your power to make it work, but things are just not clicking and it's not working, you're not trapped. And there is a way to, to still live your awesome, amazing, incredible life. You know why? Because your individuality is also very important. This is a very big topic. There's a lot of stuff to say. There's a lot of different opinions. There's a lot of different controversy. But the, end, the ending to conclude of this live is just to say that you matter your opinions, your thoughts, your ideas, they all matter and make sure you just take that into consideration. So have a good night, everybody. Yechava, this was such a pleasure. Amazing. So I learned you guys, a lot. We should do this. We definitely should do this. Um, we should do this more for sure. Thank you for right, an unbiased then. live. Aaron, <laughs> unbiased live. Are you trying to get back at me for the other live? I, well, think first, I want to say something since he had to bring that comment up and I'm glad I saw it while I'm alive happens to be, to take back what I said last time, I asked Avi to join me first. <laughs> so we'll go back on that. I wanted it to be from a perspective of a male and a female. So to be fair to me, Avi, right? I asked you to join me that day. We are going to have another live for sure talking about it. Absolutely. Okay, so I did ask Avi, so Avi was not available. And um, I happen to also say that I want everybody who's watching today that sometimes we do have lives where, I mean, I have lives where I feel that um, we come on to have a good time, to talk, to uh, to just, you know, have, have a good time. And if some things are not, even today, if we said some things that you don't really see eye to eye with or that you don't really feel um, are correct in your way or apply to you, that's, that's, that's also acceptable. We all have uh, different ways and approaches in looking at things. So therefore, if anybody doesn't feel like something we said even today applies to you, um, maybe the next live will be something that you may enjoy like today, you may enjoy more. So just if one live is not is not your thing, just move on. We'll, we'll have a topic for everybody where we're going to be able to try to please 
<laughs> everybody in things. So that's why, thank you for bringing that up, Aaron. I did not want it to be biased at all. I actually had a lot of fun uh, doing that other live. Of course, everybody gave me all kinds of comments, feedback, and that's always appreciated. But if, Ali, you're, not, if you're not sure what your cover is talking about. No, don't, don't, even, don't even tell them which one it's about. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we should, we'll definitely have another show, everyone. Thank you so much, guys. Have a wonderful evening. Good night. And comment, share this video. Let us know what are some other topics you think are important to talk about. Um, and I'll be so glad to, to, to do it. All right. Have a good night. Good night, everybody.